late 1976. Oh yes. <laughs> In October 1976, my friend David Gilligan and I caught an overnight train from Paris to Beirutz, seeking warmth, a woman, and the legendary waves of southwest France. We'd hitchhiked around England, Ireland, and Scotland, carrying enormous O'Neill surf mats, wetsuits, and flippers. <laughs> And we were determined to use them in proper surf after a frustrating afternoon in two-foot mush in Newquay, Cornwall. <laughs> Joan Pollock was a beautiful French-Canadian girl who we'd met in London, and we had arranged to meet her again in the Beirutz Youth Hostel. The train was late, we got off at the wrong stop, and we trudged for miles in misty rain through the outskirts of town, finally sleeping under an upturned fishing boat near a breakwater. Delirious with hunger and exhaustion, soaked to the bone, worried about Joan and completely lost, but strangely elated. There was something in the air, a hint of humidity, a scent of the tropics, a whisk of Basque country and the crashing waves of the Atlantic Ocean. We eventually found the hostel and Joan and fell in with a lively bunch of travellers, including Ian, a fresh-faced 17-year-old from Hawthorne, who Joan found <coughs> particularly hilarious. <laughs> oh, Ian! Speak some more about this footballer, Peter Hudson. <laughs> All of us were from somewhere else, chasing various dreams, telling tall stories, and playing games. All of us, well and truly, under the spell of Joan Pollock. <laughs> Bewitched and mesmerized by her laughing eyes, her cheeky smile, her long, flowing hair, exotic accent, and chic dress sense. Army pants tucked into short leather boots, silk shirts, bangles, and bows. <laughs> oh, baby, I love you. Want to tell you I love you way, every way. I want to be with you night and day. Yeah. You thought Phil Collins was bad. <laughs> After a week in Beirutz, Dave, Joan, Ian and I decided to hitchhike to Barcelona. Ian and Joan were gone in a flash. Dave and I got stuck doing hostel chores. We then slowly hitchhiked, bussed, trained and walked across Spain to Barcelona, where we were reunited and we had a fine time. A week later, Dave and Ian went back to London and Joan and I spent the next two months in Valencia, Ibiza and Morocco. By late December, we are in deep Morocco, staying at Café Le Hippie <laughs> in the coastal town of Essaouira. Joan and I have stopped talking to each other. <laughs> there is a strange, chilly atmosphere between us that I never fully understood then or now. Probably I was paralysed by the clash of her striking foreign beauty with my North Baldwin plainness, <coughs> coupled with the weirdness and the intensity and the isolation and the hashish of Morocco. <laughs> After one more silent journey south to a rock-blasted wreck of a town called Sidi Ifni, I wake in the middle of the night, fevered and confused listening to distant gunfire in Mauritania, and I realise I have to get out. Joan sighs, Joan nods, and Joan agrees, I think. We travel on a rickety bus through vast deserts and snowy mountains, 
catch a ferry to Cadiz and hitchhike north, finally scoring one lift all the way to Paris with some French students in a combi. <laughs> I remember they had Frampton Comes Alive on cassette and they played it over and over again. It was the only cassette in that combi and no one seemed to mind. I remember a broken heater, I remember jammed windows, sliding crazily on icy mountain roads and wishing I was in Melbourne buying mum and dad useless presents at Doncaster shopping town. We drove through the deserted streets of Madrid at 3am on Christmas day, me trying to keep the driver awake, feeling stupid and lonely, while Joan and the students swapped stories and told jokes and laughed and sang French carols in the back. We get out somewhere in Paris, and just as I'm about to say the things I'd been thinking to say to Joan in the combi van, the things I'd been wanting to say to Joan for two months, the things I'd been wanting to say since I first set eyes on Joan, she hoists her pack, flicks that shiny, luxurious hair, and walks towards the metro. I never saw her again. So don't hesitate, right? Cause your love won't wait. 37 years later, I'm kicking a football in Albert Park with a few mates, including Ian. <laughs> Ian! who Joan found hilarious all those years ago. We're having one of our misty-eyed and breathless chats about Bayreuth and Basque Country and Barcelona and Joan Pollock. So Brian, you and Joan, did you ever, did you? I mean, you know, surely you, did you ever, you know, you and her, did you ever, I mean, you must have, you, never. <laughs> never? Never. Never? Not ever. Jeez, I did. <laughs> she was unbelievable. <laughs> Magnificent. That first night, after we left Beirut, you and Dave caught up with us after you'd wiped out the hostel fridges. Remember? We all stayed in one room, in a pension, and you and Dave slept in one bed, and Joan and I shared another, and when you were asleep and snoring, she got under the blankets I and... Won't... 